We're back on shift inside the ambulance. It's a Sunday morning, man. What the hell? If I'm awake, they're awake. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Point to me where the pain is. Are you still with me, Hannah? Hey. Yeah? As they face more heart-pounding action... Can you feel me touching you? Yes. ..and more medical emergencies... You thought you were going to die? Yeah. You're going to be fine. ..battling over 4,000 calls each day. Can you pop that back on there again, just over the top? Hold that on. We'll have to roll you a little bit one way. Ooh. How do you feel at the moment, Petal? Ooh. What's that from? There are some new faces. I do think we work well together. We really. make a good team. Yeah. Do you think I look like you back Is that what you're saying? No comments. <laughs> <laughs> and some old friends. Pardon? Thanks. I don't think you turned on the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> don't panic. Just move out me way. Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Did you bump your nose? <laughs> Just a key. Come on, man. <laughs> to show you what goes on behind closed doors. There's lots of crypt, there's loads, isn't there? Yeah. Look at that. People knock the NHS, don't they? And I've just wiped your nose twice. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews as we take you inside the ambulance. Come hello, high water, we're coming. Another day in paradise, R. Craig? Indeed. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, nice. Nice to see you, nice. You can't quote somebody. He's dead, it's fine. Copyright, Brucey. I used to my Avon round up here, and I think it was that one. The bloke got electrocuted while I was coming round in my Avon round. Hey. Yeah. Shocking. It was, shock it was shocking. <laughs> it really was. Boom, boom. Thank you very much. I'm here for at least another two shifts. I went to a guy not so long ago got a screwdriver stuck in his penis. <laughs> like, Why'd you put a like, screwdriver in your penis? Well, in fairness, he put it through his foreskin, so it wasn't actually through, like, the main shaft. Was he trying to pierce it or something? <laughs> I have no idea. It's a warm spring afternoon in the West Midlands. It's so sunny, it's so nice. Lisa and Catherine Hickman are ambulance crewmates, flatmates, and identical twin sisters. I want to be on the beach. That's where I want yeah, to be. with an ice cream. Uh, I think we work really well together. We do, definitely. I think it, it helps that we know each other so well. It's like working with your best friend, isn't it? Oh, yes. Oh, it's down the road. Known heroin user, patient state does not need ambulance as self-discharged. I'm not entirely sure what's happening. Oh, has he discharged himself from hospital? Oh, maybe. Query intoxicated. Oh, we can't leave him if he's intoxicated. There is a police person there. Police officer. Um, I'm going to have to pull in you. You might as well go in there, aren't you? A police community support officer called the ambulance when she spotted a man wearing hospital pyjamas on the street. Hello there. My name's Lisa, this is Catherine, we're paramedic. We've been called today because people are a bit concerned about you. It does look like you should be in hospital. So what's happened today? Someone brought you a drink, yeah. Yeah. Have you had any drugs today? Yeah. What have you had? Um, cocaine. Cocaine, any heroin? Yeah. So you've had cocaine and heroin. It's not a good mix. Yeah. Do you want to come on to our ambulance and we can check you over? And then if you need to go back to hospital, we'll take you back to hospital. How about that? Yeah, but we're going to have to take you in. I don't think you're in any state to take yourself in. So we, we'll have to let them know that you did go away. But I'm sure as long as you promise to stay for treatment, it won't be a problem. Lisa and Catherine are concerned about his condition 
as the patient has walked out of hospital before he was medically fit to leave. You look like you're struggling just to sit up on this seat. No, no, the pain, no. Let's pop this on your finger. Where's your pain? On my knee. Which knee is it? So this one here, it does look swollen. Yeah. You've got an infection in it. You definitely need to go to hospital then, don't you, to get that sorted. Yeah. Your heart rate is very quick as well. So I don't know if that's the infection or if that's because of the cocaine. Um, but either way, it's not safe for you to be sitting here at the moment. Can we get you on the ambulance where it's a bit more private and we can have a proper chat? Let's help you up. Put the weight on your good leg if you can. Push up, push up, push up. There you go. OK. Do you want any hand lifting your legs up? It's just got worse. You do your good leg. Let me do your What, has the leg. pain just got worse, has it? The hospital is nearly two miles away. Before they take the patient back, Lisa and Catherine want to run some tests. I'm going to do a few more checks on you. Have you had surgery on your knee? I've had an operation. You've had an operation on there? What was the operation? What did it do? Drain the, drain the knee. Because your heart's going a little bit quickly, I need to put some stickers onto your chest so I can have a proper look at the whole of your heart. Is that OK? Yeah. You had this done before? Yeah. OK, am I all right to lift your shirt up? Yeah. Okay. Lisa needs to keep a close eye on him, as it's hard to tell if his condition is due to drink and drugs or a complication after the operation. Have you been on any medications at hospital? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what they've been giving you? Anti antibiotics and paracetamol. OK. You fall into sleep, then? Yeah. You had a busy day? <laughs> yeah. So why did you break free of the hospital today? Then what were you, what were your plans? Just having, just having a nice cold beer with my mates. Do you know what time you left the hospital? About 10 o'clock. About 10 o'clock. It's now gone 1 p.m. He's been missing for over three hours. Before we go, can I just have a look at your knee? Yeah. Is that all right? What day did you have the operation on? Um, Monday. Monday, so only a couple of days ago. Yeah. You really shouldn't be walking on it. Uh, we felt all right. Probably felt all right because you were resting it. You did say it was hurting you a bit more now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you've definitely had it. Looks like it just key on. Yeah, just... Right, I'm lift this trouser up as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, wow, yeah, it's a big difference. Right then, we better take you back to Russell's all, then, don't we? Call off the search party. Now the crew can return the patient to hospital, where doctors can get any possible infection under control. All oh, right, it's down a little bit from what it was, but it's still quite high. And he can get the rest he needs. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're not very old, are you? Me, 26. How about you? 26. Both the same age. Really weird. We are, oh, yeah, yeah we're definitely. best friends. We're like sisters, aren't we? We are exactly like sisters. Hopefully, he's going to stay in now. I, think I we hope might have, so. Um, I'd like to think that he'll see that what he's doing is wrong and we'll... Yeah, we'll get some help for we'll him. We'll get some help. It's a shame that he's just, you know, that he's carrying on kind of as he is, isn't it, really? It's no good for him. I'm going to go left here, down butts. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Down Butts Lane. Down Butts Lane. He's such a child. <laughs> it's just called Butts Lane. It's not a big deal. It's got the word butts in it. Right. Ambulance crewmates Ben Fletcher and Anna Ray are on the road. How was your birthday? How good day? Yeah, it was all right. Ash took me for a Nando's. Very nice. All right. Yeah. What are you 22 now? 22. 
I wish. I wish, Ben. Ben has been with the ambulance service for five years and is a fully qualified paramedic. Anna is still training, having spent a decade in other healthcare jobs before choosing life on the front line. That was a long time ago when I was 22. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. Oh, 10 years, that is long. <laughs> I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. All right, Anna, we're going to come through as an arrest or peri arrest. We're only about a mile away, so we'll be there in about two, three minutes. It's a category one call, meaning the patient's condition could be life threatening. All right, now is a male, unconscious, noisy breathing. Nine-year-old Gerald has fallen unconscious. Unable to wake him, his concerned carers Deb and Marie called for help. He's had okay, a thank you. Trip this morning, oh. which is about to, yeah. and he's just had another one, and they're quite. Oh, okay. To be okay. Uh, oh. He's just, he has had heart failure and he's stroke uh -huh. for his life. He's two breathing quite lively. Is two seizures unusual to have two from the same day, or is that? That's as unusual, is it? Right, OK. Gerald had a stroke 13 years ago and made a partial recovery. He's very warm everywhere. 374. But a few years later, he fell and suffered a head injury that left him bedbound and in need of round the clock care. Normally, quite okay, we can normally talk, have a he conversation. Can't talk. No, he can't communicate at all. But you can tell he speaks with his eyes, Gerald. OK, OK. Gerald? Gerald? Okay, what's wrong with me? Do you want to give him some oxygen just to help mm. him come around? Mm hmm. It's that's a I'm not just help him come out. Hello. Are you okay. Gerald has been married to Barbara for 67 years. How's he been the last couple of days? Has he been any different from normal or? No, although I fed him this morning which I don't normally do, because mm -hmm. I've always made him do it himself. Mm -hmm. I says to the girls, I says, I bet you think I'm wicked, don't you? I says, well, he ain't going to be a cabbage. I'll help him as and when. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But that's good. Well, it's good to be independent. You have to encourage them to yeah. be independent. Well, of course. To, I mean, it was me that learned him to walk, but then... Oh. Well, that's not being mean, that's doing the best for him. That's yeah. Good, you know. Barbara used to care for Gerald full time. However, after his life-changing head injury, she was unable to cope alone. You all right, Bob? Me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a tough old dude. <laughs> I'm not a mother. Gerald. Hello. You're going to open your eyes for us? Come on, Jill. Come on, cock. Open your eyes. Gerard! Gerard! Would he normally be around by now? He is looking. Yeah. Hello! Yeah. He normally gets his eyes open by now. Gerald! Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. He's having a oh, yawn. As the carers leave. Cheers. Thank you. See you later. Gerald and Barbara's granddaughters come round to help. Does he normally have high blood pressure, or is it normally...? Normally high, yeah. I know last two weeks ago when you come out, it was really high. It's quite high at the moment, to be honest. Mm. Um, and we've been here a good 15 minutes now, so I thought it would have come down a bit if it was due to the fit. So I think today, how often does he have fits? How often...? It's uh, on and off, innit? It's like every couple of months. I can tell you. <laughs> oh, you keep a record? Oh, that's good. Good. Yeah, well organised. Yeah. I've even got every calendar from the day he had the fit. Oh, my God. I mean, he's only had like two, two this year, then two or three this year, so not many. Yeah, it was really good that Barbara kept a log of all of his seizures since his first ever one, going quite a few years back. It meant I could have a, a flick through the calendars and just see how often he has these seizures. Um, that's what I found out, he'd never had two in the same day, and that's why it's so unusual for him. 
I'd probably advise getting it checked over, Dan, VA and need just to make sure. I'd say I might go for the scan or something to make sure mm. there's nothing, not like a bleed or anything going on. I'll go and get the beds. Okay, cool, cool. It got quite an extensive history of seizures with his epilepsy, but there can be other reasons for seizures, so it can be someone's had a stroke um, or a bleed on the brain. The fact he hadn't come around and his blood pressure was quite high, to be honest. We had to make sure there was nothing else going on. How are we doing, Gerald? All right, we're going to pop you down the hospital because you've had two fits today, and that's unusual for you to have two in the same day, isn't it? Yeah. So it's going to get you checked over. You shouldn't be there too long, OK? And then we'll get you back home after that. All right? Gerald's granddaughter, Michelle, will follow the ambulance in her car. The hospital is just a three-mile drive from Gerald's home. During the short journey, he's begun to improve. Not too far away now, OK? Your fingers well. There we go. Hello. You more awake now? Come on a bit now. It's probably my driving. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that bad, was it, driving? Gerald will now be seen by the doctors to find out what might have caused his seizures today. There's a nice couple on there, about uh, Gerald and Barbara. Yeah. Yeah. Just a shame, like, hmm. he's in that condition that he can't really do much for himself. Fair well, play to her. For fair play to her. She's looking after Yeah. Him. She's doing pretty much everything for him. That's, That's what you call love. Mm, certainly mm. is. Certainly is. There's a, there's a gender neutral term now for sugar daddies and sugar mamas. Sugar? No, glucose guardians. Really? Mm. Or like um, housewife or house husband when you could have the gender neutral house spouse. House, house spouse. <laughs> It's late afternoon, and experienced paramedic Tina Spittle is on shift with Ellie Drakeley, who qualified 18 months ago. Well, what does that mean? A category 3 DX0122. <laughs> you mean you don't know what that is? I don't know what that is. How could you not know what that is? <laughs> Unfortunately, beyond my medical scope at this current time. <laughs> yeah. At 22, Ellie is one of the youngest qualified paramedics in the West Midlands. 4597. She's already impressing Tina. 97, afternoon, go ahead. Hello, mate, afternoon to you. Um, we just got on the way to this job. We were just wondering whether there is any more information. Yeah, no problem at all. We've got a 44 year old female, palpitations, short of breath, and upper back pain. Okay. A category three call is not considered life threatening. I've been to this house before. Have you? I have. The patient, Sarah, called the ambulance herself when she felt her heart racing. Hello. Is it for yourself that we've come to see? Me, right, yeah. okay. All right. What's your name, Chick? Sarah. Sarah, nice to meet you, Sarah. I'm Ellie. This is uh, Tina behind me. Right then, Sarah. What's been going on? Um, What's happening? Well, I've had these episodes before. OK, what episode? Have you been to hospital and diagnosed before? Uh, they just said I've got an irregular rhythm. Once it was an SVT and then they said it was an irregular rhythm. On OK, medication. have you ever been cardioverted or had any drugs to slow your heart down and stop it? Yes, and I reset did have drugs, it? yeah. Pain in your chest at all, Chick? Uh, not really, I feel a bit breathless. You just feel a little bit breathless. Mm. And what time did it all start today? Uh, it's been going on really for about 24 hours matter. but it's got a lot okay so you've been struggling out. with it for 24 hours yeah okay any dizziness or nausea at all a little bit of dizziness yeah have you been sleeping properly no you haven't no okay anxious upset very my okay. father just passed away at the manor so well not right. just but recently Christmas. you've had a recent yeah. bereavement so a, yeah sarah didn't appear too distressed when we kind of got her upstairs it became apparent that she'd just lost her dad, so she was very anxious, um, a little bit upset. So the first thing we needed to do was calm her down and keep her 
kind of steady so it didn't affect her heart rate further. I think I've been to you before. I remember I the address. I thought I recognised your face. Yeah, yeah. Sharp scratch, I thought darling. I recognised your face. Yeah. People say it's crime watch, but they haven't put me on for a while, so you're all right. <laughs> it is irregular. I'll pop a line in. Can I Do pop I... a needle in the back of your hand or your arm, Chick? Is yeah, that okay? I'm going to get Yeah. Stay nice and calm yeah. for us, all right, okay? okay. Um, Try and slow that breathing down, yeah, okay? Okay, it's strong. We're still at about two. Yeah, oh. I would definitely say it's fast diet now. Because it's jumping between about 160 oh. and about 200. Tina and Ellie think Sarah's symptoms could be being caused by a condition called atrial fibrillation, or AF, which causes a fast, irregular heartbeat. It's rare in under 65s. Oh. You've got, what's, what's going on, Chick? Talk to me. It's just going up and down. You can down. just feel it going up mm. and down? Yeah. Okay. With Sarah's symptoms getting worse, not better, she needs specialist help. L. Yeah. Oh gosh. I think we're about 257. Mm. Yeah, I think. It's... I think we're in fast AF. I think fast AF. Well, because than... it's fluctuating too much. It's flu It's going right down to 160. Yeah. Oh, Coming back up to 200 and something odd. Yeah, it is. Oh. Um. Right. Nice and still for me, Tiff. Sure. I just do another yeah. tracing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sarah's heart rate was all over the shop. Um, it kept racing up to quite a high level. It's very unusual to see people of Sarah's age in crisis with their AF. However, we really knew that with this condition, you can become very um, poorly very quickly. So we needed to get her to hospital as soon as we could. Oh, God. Wow, well, that's hurting. Is it hurting in your chest now? Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. You good to go, mate? Yeah, I'm happy. Oh. They are two and a half miles from the hospital and will need blues and twos to get them there as quickly as possible. Well, wow, that's hurting. It's hurting in the centre of your chest, is it? It's yeah. not to your left arm at all or no, no. your neck or your No, it's just the centre of my chest. Just the centre of your chest. Oh. I am with you. Where is the pain? Point to it with one finger, right in the centre. Yeah. Worse when you're breathing or out at all? Uh, only when you're breathing. When you're breathing, it gets worse. It's a bit sharp. Mm. OK. Right. What number would you give the pain in your chest, should I said, then? It's about seven. About a seven? Yeah. OK, and it wasn't there when we first arrived? No. OK. Oh. OK, Chick, we've just called into the manor now. Oh, God, paramedics are very people. <laughs> Bless you. Oh. Bless you. In the six minutes it's taken to get to hospital, Sarah's condition has worsened considerably. Take oh, gosh. Just for a second. That's really painful, then. Painful. Oh, yeah. Get you in. Get you seen, too. Oh, gosh. All right. Pop that back on for me. Thank you. OK. Here we go. Bit of a bump, darling. All right? Ready? OK. In A&E, the team are on standby to give Sarah the urgent treatment she requires. Well, well, well. What about a surprise for oh, them? Fast AF in that per a person of that age is just so... It's not. It's not normal. Un unheard of. Yeah. You hear a fast AF in 80-year-old old Doris. Yeah. You know, you don't hear a fast AF in a 44-year-old. No. Nope. So, yeah, she was a bit of a, a shock to she the was. system. She was a bit of a shock to the system. I had to dig my car out to get to it out today. It's what I was wearing my wellies when I rocked up to work. 
I did see them. Yeah, yeah, like they're really warm. They're like got, I, I wear them when I go fishing. They've got like thermal lining and stuff. It keep, keep your feet really warm. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm having to dig my car out of like 18 inches worth of snow, which is kind of is a clue, like accumulated over the course of the last 12 hours. It's not the heating down a bit, Buzz. I'm boasting. Are you cold? Are you hot again? I, I, I'm having to see any moments again, You're I think. Any moment. I've turned it down. Thank you. <laughs> I'm freezing here. Was there a problem with it being on high temperature? Did you put it on? I, put, I put it on full, yeah, because oh, I knew you were. I apologise there, my friend. I didn't realise that you turned it that. right up for you. Thank you. Much appreciated. My hands are like blocks of ice. Oh, oh look at that. Paramedics V. Hodgkins and Ollie Raven have worked together for over three years. It is an 87-year-old female with upper back pain and a rapid heart rate. V was Ollie's mentor during his paramedic training, and they've since become good friends. Proper snowing. Driving like this is almost like uh, Star Wars, isn't it? It is in the snow with in the lights, the snow, yeah. 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 Who do you want to be? Who do I want to be? Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Do you think I look like Chewbacca? Is that what you're saying? No comments. <laughs> this is going to be fun to find, Ollie. Look, know, it's going to be yeah. right on the junction. It's going to be one oh, of these, isn't it? It's going to be one of those up there. Maybe the one there. Yeah. Is it all clipped with the bungalow? Is it? Did it? Oh, look Bingo. At that. Bungalow with stairs. Just what you want. The killer cat. The killer cat. <laughs> Where are we? The patient's sons, Martin and Robert, were visiting their mum, Elsie, when she became ill. Hello. Hello, Elsie. My name's V. This is Ollie behind me. What's the problem today, Elsie? I've just short of breath yeah. when I stood up. Uh-huh. Uh, I haven't felt very well all day. OK. Have you had chest pain? Not exactly pain, but it's felt so. Uh... Okay, can I have this wrist and just try and feel on this wrist? So not a pain. What have you had? It just uh, I had pain across my shoulders. Just uh, I suppose it was a slight tightness. A tightness. Just... Okay. Elsie's concerned sons called one one one, who alerted the ambulance. And what medical conditions have you got? Atrial fibrillation. You have atrial fibrillation. OK. Let's do your blood pressure. Uh... She's got one. It's, it's weak on that side. Mm. Of it on this side. You're covered in bruises. Are you, oh, on yeah. an, are you on blood thinners by any chance? Yes. Do you feel short of breath at the moment, Elsie? Not while I'm sitting there. Elsie. Oh, goodness me. Oh, me. What's that from? From the boyfriend. How long has that arm been like that for? Uh, week. You had a fall? No. Elsie was a frail old lady. She'd got horrific bruise into her arms, um, particularly the one arm. This was caused by blood thinners that she was on. The reason we were there was for shortness of breath, and really we had to sort of overlook the arms and get on with treating the cause of uh, the call. So, shortness of breath, has that just been today? Yes, more or less. How's your breathing been at night time? Have you been struck? All right. Yes. OK. Let's have a listen to your your chest then, if I may, I'll say. Yes. It's the killer cat. Yeah. Give you a nasty look. Yeah. Try and take some deep breaths, Elsie. That's it. And out. She's pretty, isn't she? Very. No, she's on. She scratched me and I've lost two parts of blood. Oh, goodness me, that's not good, is it? No, she did it accidentally. Of course, yeah, yeah, but losing two points of blood, that's yeah, why they said she was a killer cat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, looking at you, we've got an increase in fluid in your, in your legs, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
and listen to your chest. It sounds like you might have a little bit of fluid on, on the basis of your lungs. So that needs to be formally diagnosed. Oh, I see. And we need a chest X-ray to do that. Yeah. And if you're out of breath, just walking a few steps, then that's something we really need to do today. Yes. I just want to get you checked out to make sure that we're not we're not dealing with this this thing called heart failure. Yes. All right. Yes. I'll see. It wasn't imminently going to go into cardiac arrest, which people may believe when they hear the term heart failure with how scary it can sound. It's just effectively that the heart isn't pumping oxygenated blood around the body as it should be, causing her shortness of breath and, and tiredness. Took you in. Keep you warm. Yes. How are you feeling, Elsie? I'm all right in this position. I'll have the least bruised arm for your blood pressure again, if I may. Yes. That one's pretty horrific, the other one, isn't it? It is. Yeah. You sure you've not been fighting? Mm. Yes. You sure? Yes. Hold on tight, Elsie. Nice. Elsie's holding on tight. Scream if she wants to go faster. She will. <laughs> Lying still in the ambulance, Elsie's condition is improving. How's the breathing feel at the moment? OK? Yes, fine. Even with Ollie's driving? Yes. Judging by the bumps, I don't think we're too far away. <laughs> it's a bit busy. Is it busy? As in, like, nowhere to park busy. Ah, it's busy, Elsie. Shall we take you back? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. What about there on the left, Ollie? There, there, there. I was left. going to go here on the right instead. Oh. It's closer to the door. OK. Happy? Happy. Here we go, Elsie. Your driving was OK, apparently. OK. It was OK, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was OK. Elsie will now have the investigations she needs to decide on the best course of treatment. That bruising on her arm was bad, wasn't it? Oh, it's like a, it was almost like she got a tattooed sleeve know, on it, wasn't yeah, it? Really yeah, really bad. Simply from uh... from her blood clotting levels being all out. I think she's got a touch of heart failure. I always do find it's a really horrible terminology, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Heart failure. heart failure. Your heart is failing, you're going to die. Yeah, That's know, what it yeah. sounds like to people. Yeah. Chest X-ray bloods and get the definitive diagnosis and Yeah, exactly. And she'll be she'll be back ready to uh, be scratched by the cat. Day in a row. Oof. Absolutely you knackered. Poor sod. He's in the wheel, mate. And just a touch on the tired side. It's mid morning on a rainy day and paramedics Matt Rodwell and Adam Hipkiss have just received their next job. We are going to a 63-year-old male um, who's got low SATs in the doctor's surgery. This is the one with there's loads of different surgeries in there all in one. Yeah, three yeah. surgeries in one building. One of the doctors called for an ambulance when his patient arrived struggling for breath. Oh, yeah. Hello. What's your name, my man? Barry. Barry, nice to meet you, Barry. My name's Matt. Yeah. Ask me one of your fingers, mate. 
Are there any breathing problems normally? No. Normally quite fit and well. No medical history at all? Pneumonia before. Okay. Does this kind of feel the same or? Yeah. How long you been like this for? Five days like this. Okay, give me. I'll get you one, Saxon, if you're happy. Yeah. I'll get him a truck. Hey, did you get here? Drove. Drove. Ooh. Jesus. I was stunned that Barry managed to get himself to the doctors. He could barely string two words together, let alone drive a car. Uh, we were giving him oxygen and nebulizers, which weren't doing anything, so it was clear he was really poorly and had to go to the hospital. Barry, let's stand you, sharpish, and get you sat into it. Good night. Come on. Grab that. Nice one, my friend. Thank you. Nice yeah. Can you hold on to this for us, Baz? Like it's a baby. I'm going to wheel you out pretty quickly, my friend. All right. You're doing really well, fella. Well done. You thought you were going to die? Yeah. Baz, Baz, you're going to be fine. Yeah? Lean forwards for me, Baz. Lean forwards. Good lad. Okay, big fella, lean back for me. <coughs> oh, he has a incredibly nasty inspiratory and expiratory ways. Not only is Barry struggling to get enough breath in, he's finding it hard to exhale too. The crew fear his epiglottis, part of his throat, could be inflamed. Epiglottitis is a swelling of part of your airway and when it swells up, you can close your airway off and you can stop breathing. It's really quite nasty and um, it can be fatal in some patients. Slip your arm out of here, because we're going to get your top off. I've got the eating on. OK, let's get, this is a brand spanking new ambulance. It's going to be red hot in a minute on this one. The crew yeah. must get Barry to hospital quickly. But first, they want to try to help his breathing. Doing really well, big fella. How are you with needles? Can I have a look at getting one in your arm? Is that OK? Because you are struggling, ain't you? The cannula will allow Barry to have fast-acting steroids, which should open his lungs. Right then, mate. Sharp scratch, OK? Right, tell me if this starts to hurt, mate, OK? I'm going to jump in. Yeah. Huh? You can't breathe. Struggling. Now get your moving, mate, OK? You OK? Yeah? You had a cough or anything? A little bit. Have you coughed anything up? Yeah. What colour? Yeah. Is it clear or...? Blood spots. Blood spots as well? OK. Has that just been in the last five days or...? Just today? OK. You all right, Ads? Yeah. Sound lab search for about two minutes. At least we're not too far away from the hospital, so we can get you sorted and get you seen. All right. Does it feel any easier? So, so. Yeah. Tell you what, you've done well to bloody drive to, to your doctors like this. I'm amazed. Couple of bumps as we go out, okay. Barry can now get the urgent medical assistance he needs. There aren't many people you're gonna see that poorly conscious. Yeah. He's probably one of the most ill patients I've had in a long time. 
It was the open mouth breathing. I've never seen someone open mouth breathe like that. You know, that when you're at uni, they, they teach you the term air hunger. Yeah. And if they gulp the air, they gulp, but they gulp when they breathe to get as much as they can. Yeah, um, that's what he looks like. I've never Just seen him in four years. In fairness, though, smash that job in hospital under half an hour from when we got the job. Do you know what I mean? Job done. The patient who was found in the street was returned to hospital. After further treatment, his infected knee is improving, but he still struggles with addiction. 89-year-old Gerald, who had suffered two seizures, was diagnosed with an infection and was treated with antibiotics. After a brief stay in hospital, he's now back home, where he continues to be looked after by Barbara and his carers. Sarah's very fast and irregular heart rate was brought under control with beta blockers and she went home the same day. She still has frequent episodes and her cardiologist is considering fitting her with a pacemaker. Elsie, who had suspected heart failure, spent the night in hospital before being discharged with a referral to the cardiologist, who can hopefully get to the bottom of her symptoms. Barry slipped into a coma as he arrived at hospital and only regained consciousness after six days in intensive care. Doctors weren't able to find the underlying cause for his epiglottitis, but after a further eight days in hospital, he was well enough to continue his recovery at home. My colleague, I need you to watch me back. Tell me what it is I've hit. I know. You hear me squelch and scream, you'll know. It'll be you. Yep, that's the one. Don't stand between the trucks. Aye. So where does he go? Uh, 